Sebastian, um, you yes. got arrested for doing art. <laughs> yeah, I did. Was it Quite worth it? <laughs> was it worth it? Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, I, I got to be careful how I talk about this because I don't want to like, I don't want to encourage people to, you know, go break the law and whatnot. But like, basically, this whole thing came about, I've always been interested in art. Like, I've always been like, inclined towards that that side of things. And uh, I grew up like, like I said, an immigrant family. So uh, this dynamic we had is actually really interesting. I'll give you guys kind of like a background. So when my family came here, my grandparents did the immigrant thing. They opened a fucking corner store. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they opened a corner store, got some relative to success. They flipped one corner store to another and then basically built like a supermarket and they did relatively well for themselves. Meantime, my grandfather was doing some like, you know, like brokering deals, like international deals or whatever. Long story short there, they came into some cash. He built this fucking like baller custom mansion on Vancouver Island. And my mom was like living on welfare later when she was like an adult because single parent, she didn't care about money. She just wanted to do her fucking thing. And so didn't care about it. But then like my grandparents had this mansion. And so while my mom was kind of like traveling and working to do whatever she needed to do, we'd stay at this mansion, but then we'd be back in social housing, like during the, the rest of the year. Like, so it was like, I was in this weird situation where I was like in this baller environment, but then I was at home in the hood. But what happened because of this was that I was kind of like incubated in the family. And so I had this very like underexposed art desire. And I was like, and like inclination. So I'm just like kind of doing stuff and like watching movies and like, you know, whatever, all this like fuckery. And then when I went to school in the hood, I got exposed to graffiti and it just like, it was like so exciting because I was like being like in this immigrant kind of isolation, like in this like small bubble of the family, like I didn't, I wasn't getting like that fire. Like it was cool to be around the family, but I didn't have that spark. I needed that excitement. And then when I got introduced to graffiti, my whole fucking life changed uh, because it was like, now it was this thing. And basically I got exposed to it when I was like in grade four, like early elementary school, like I got exposed to it. And then I spent like the next 10 years doing just graffiti, like full blown. And because it became, I didn't have a dad in the picture. So I was only with my mom and my sister and my grandma and then my grandpa, like when I was over there. So it was like mostly chicks and I was a guy like developing as a guy and I had no masculine influence. And then graffiti became the place where I got the fucking edge, where I learned about like street culture, mm. where I learned about like, you know, hardness and like all of this shit. So it became like the perfect developmental space for me as a guy. And um, like, this is where I, like, I'm touchy about like, like <laughs> joking about like getting arrested and stuff, but it's like, I learned so much from the street that I would never have learned if I just took a traditional path in school and like whatever. And it made me who I am. It gave me everything that I need to bowl over my competition because I will go into any circumstance with any other artist and I will eat their fucking lunch because I know what it means to be under pressure. I know what it means to handle challenging circumstances. I know what it means to, to, to be responsible for other people's lives, to be honest, because we're dealing with all kinds of fuckery, right? So um, it trained me to be ruthless, but it had costs, right? And somehow, like I got before I was 18, like I knew that I kind of had a clock on my, my playground time, because once you're over 18, you're 19, you're officially like an adult territory. So if you get charged permanent records, however, you can still break that rule. If you fucking do enough crazy shit underage, they'll charge you as an adult, whatever. Right. So I somehow skirted that line. I got roasted like five times progressively more intense, like right before my 19th birthday. And I kept getting this thing called diversion which was basically, it's like, it's a program that they run for minors to basically to avoid per giving them a permanent record, a permanent charge on their record. And it's like, you have to go through this program. It's basically like a, 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 a bad kids rehabilitation system, right? And I got it five times, which was like unheard of in my, in my city. Like people were like, Sebastian, even the judge what? was like, how are you still <laughs> <laughs> he, he set a, a, like a record a guinness world record for a criminal yeah exactly and there was a pattern that, yeah there was a pattern that kept coming up i knew that i could, i had to avoid getting a permanent record because i knew intuitively that i needed to be able to travel for my future i knew that i had to do something more that required travel right and so I kind of was like playing the game in a way where i was like still getting off my fucking you know my graffiti yeah, nut, I guess. God, yeah, that and, mindset. yeah and then like, and then when I was in these situations, like the first time I got arrested, the cop literally came to my family home, sat down with me and my mom who says, you have too much talent to be doing this and risking your freedom. You have to get out of this the first time. I didn't learn that right away. I 
I had a couple more. <laughs> it took you five times. <laughs> but, um, and then another time, like one of the later times, uh, this was probably the more intense one. I got caught painting trains, which was like, that's like felony over five uh, for charge, which is like, that's like a more serious charge. And then uh, I was in court. My grandfather came with me to like, to be like my, my representative, I guess, like my, cause I was a minor. So he came to like sit in the court session. And then the judge was like, he's like, they're like, this is after a couple times being in there. She's like, I don't know why, how you're still here, but I want you to turn around and look at your grandfather and look at the person who came here to come and represent you and to stand behind your character. I'm going to give you diversion, but you need to make this count. Like you cannot be back here. And like, I, I think I had one more time after that, but like there was some sort of a pattern. And I talk about this a lot in my content about like a higher calling and that we have a purpose to be here, like beyond just whatever fuckery we're supposed to be doing. And even those like intuitive senses that I had about um, like, I need to travel, I need to be like careful about certain things. Like I had, there was these little clues and these little patterns that have told me that I'm here for something more than what meets the eye. And the, the legal system essentially reiterated that they're like, you cannot be here. Like you have to be out in the world. You have to get out of this. And mm -hmm. so it, it was intense, right? Sebastian, and, uh, yeah. let me say, the legal Sebastian, system you're not really, a bad like, guy. Trusted in you to, to follow yeah. your yeah. path. Right. So doing art is <laughs> yeah. not a bad thing. Like, you're not a bad so, guy for doing art. You're not a criminal. There are people who do yeah. crimes. There are murderers. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Jeffrey like Epstein's they recognize that you're just yeah, painting. Yeah, they recognize painting. that. Yeah. And the thing is, is like the issue with graffiti is that like it, it is, it creates damages for businesses, right? And yeah. businesses run our countries. And so especially small businesses that get hit with graffiti, they get hit with costs that now fuck with their shit. So it fucks with the economy. So there's like a, there's a, a, a knock on effect that graffiti has on the economy <laughs> that makes yeah. it an issue. But there is, there is people in the culture, like it's a melting, it's an underground melting pot of people with no rules. And so this also goes back to where I learned so much was that I was like 15, 16, I got thrown into this illegal underground that with people who are my age and people who are twice our age and everything in between who are breaking the law and were like complete criminals, crackheads and junkies. And then also people who were doing this thing, but that were creating incredible results. And so I yeah. saw how the decisions my, me and my friends were making in the present moment as young kids were reflected 15 years into the future through these individuals who were playing in the same world. And so I got to see from the buffet of life, which decisions would create a life that I actually wanted. And for some reason, the friends that I was with, like they still made dumb, dumb decisions that resulted in the fucking people that we didn't want to be. And I'm like, how are you guys making these decisions? Like they're doing random drugs that they don't know what they are. They're picking up smoking habits. They're like fucking, you know, they're going above and beyond like all of this dumb fuckery that people were getting into. And I'm like, it didn't make sense to me because the evidence was right in front of us. But yeah, like with, with all of that, like there was a tremendous amount of value that you know, most people don't have to take the same path to, to learn. Like you could just look out in life, but yeah, yeah, I, I don't regret any of it. For me, it, it know, was worth it because I've been able to. Um, you were saying um, about the business's perspective that it does harm businesses, but in a way, I think it, it adds to the world. You know, it's like you look around, you look at a painting, it inspires you, makes you feel awesome makes you feel epic if anything it attracts you to a business if, anything, if, if it's if done you, like if it's done like some dope shit right look like at if that it's done, if it's done intentionally but there's like tags and like bombs and shit huh how do you so, so how do you separate that how yeah, do you referring to the paint, what is, he's referring to the painting <laughs> that you showed us yeah that's very good. yeah that's pretty baller yeah like it, like now, there's like hard. trash graffiti there, there's like stuff that's like culturally competitive where it's just like scrawls and shit right like that doesn't help the yeah. business like if you go to like urban street graffiti and it's just like a mess to the public there is murals and then there's like street graffiti which, which are two different things and like the culture basically takes property the graffiti culture takes property from the public and then declares it their own right and then they compete over that so that doesn't really help the businesses because it doesn't serve the purpose of the business it doesn't communicate their values it doesn't do all of these things that actually are necessary for the economy of that business however now with my and this is actually where i turned it into a business is that i actually knew and learned how to take the values of a business and put it into my artwork so that they make more money and i get paid to do what i love to do and then do it in a big way and that basically became my business. Like, and we still do it today. Like we consult with businesses, we help them bring their visions to life through 
an art form that most people don't have a grip on. And then on top of it, the people who are in that world, they don't have a professionalism. So they don't know how the fuck to do business anyways. So you can't deal with them. So that's where I had the edge. Like I, I became exposed to like, and actually the, the way I got business savvy was that graffiti is linked with rap music. And so, and it's temporary. So I learned how to document it. And then Instagram came out. So I learned how to document graffiti that was temporary. Instagram came out so that I started documenting on social media. So then I learned how to do branding. And then when I learned how to do branding, I learned how to create content that converts. And then because I was doing that and then graffiti was hip hop adjacent, I started doing content and rap videos for the music industry. And then because I was doing rap music videos uh, for the, for the industry, now I started doing event promos for the owners of the clubs. And then now I'm dealing with uh, business owners and CEOs for uh, content marketing in the music industry with the intention of converting eyeballs into dollar signs. And then now I have this professional like edge because I also wanted to be successful. So I, I started pulling this thread and then now I went from being a street kid painting fucking graph to now dealing with some of the most successful people in my cities and traveling the world, literally just doing content marketing but having an edge because I came from the street so I could deal with people at a higher level and I could be more rugged in the way that I got results. I wasn't some like art school kid with a fucking camera and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do an edit for you. Nah, I was like, I need one <laughs> camera, I need access to the location, I'm gonna be in the fucking crowd and I'm gonna get this shit done and I'll get it done like instantly. There, I was underage being brought into the club because of who I was and how I showed up. And so- I have one question. Yeah, go ahead. How did you work with Hennessy? How did I, Not this, nice exactly, nice. exactly this. So because like I was like, you dropped out on the call, oh, but by the way, I cut off. yeah, yeah. So you dropped out on the call, but graffiti being tied to rap music because it is graffiti is the written language of hip hop and rap or hip hop is the spoken. Right. And so they're part of the same ecosystem. And so because I got involved in that world, what, who sponsors rap events and rap shows, liquor companies. And so liquor companies were now becoming my clients and I was doing the promotional uh, content, the marketing content for these events that these companies had sponsored. And so now I was representing those companies and helping them promote their events that they had donated money or liquor or whatever to that they needed to look a certain way so that their investment in that event or into that show or into that company was validated. And I did that through content. And I wouldn't have known how to do content if I didn't start documenting my graffiti because it was temporary. Because we paint on the streets and then we put all this time and energy into something and then it gets erased or it's on a train and it disappears. So we had to document it. And then it started with videos and then went, I mean, uh, photos. But when Instagram came out, everyone became a photographer. So I'm like, fuck this. I want to, I want, I want to be different. So I learned video and then no one could keep up with me with video. And then that put me in the edge, right? And yeah. this also goes back to something that's so important about like, because this is on, about entrepreneurship that uh, around personal branding, I documented all of this shit and I went out of my way to create high level, in, like exciting, inspiring and educational content on my social media page that made me a character that people wanted to deal with. And I did it before they paid me. I led with value. I led with content and marketing first by building a, a page and a destination that people wanted to participate in that allowed me to kick doors down and be the first pick for anybody at the, uh, in the industry because I had done the work to build a, a, a portfolio or an example of success. And so many people fuck this up because they wait for someone to come and pay them before they perform. They're like, oh, I'm waiting for like this deal before I really show people what I've got. Not nah, like it, it's totally backwards. And because we're in the modern market, we're in the social media age, your social media is your calling card for the world. And people under invest into their social media because they're waiting for someone to pay them to show the world who, what they're worth. But in reality, if you don't lead from the front, you're never going to have those people come and see you. But when I built that page, because I documented it for free, I was working like some fucking burrito job or like a restaurant or like painting, whatever I needed to do to fund my graffiti habit, basically, so that I could do what I wanted to do. But then I documented that thing that I actually loved. And I did it in a way that was like so passionate and so invested because it's actually what I cared about. And I was willing to go the distance to put it on the right platform to be seen the right way, because it wasn't like... I wasn't investing my time creating content in something I didn't love. It's actually what I wanted to do. Everything, I went to the job so that I could afford the time to do this. And when I spent my time there, now I had this calling card on my fucking Instagram that anybody that I DM'd, any business I went into, I said, hey, I want to do X, Y, Z for you. Here's what I've done. They'd be like, let's go. 
And it, it continues to be that way. The, the brand that you have online is the doorway to everything that you want here in the, in the modern market. And I, I'm teaching wow. this to people every single day and their lives are fucking mm -hmm. transforming because people undervalue, they underappreciate the importance of having a brand that is aligned with who you are and what you're capable to do because everyone has something that they have to give. And you just have to put it out there and put it in the right light and look the right way, dress the right way, show up in the right way. And like, and then the rest is just living in contribution from there because that's what the we're here to do. So for you. a bit of a tangent. But... Totally. Yeah. Sebastian, yeah, like, so that's, that's how so I do it. So you grew up, I mean, but you learned, um, you got your mindset through the street graffiti, right? That culture, those are the people you surround yourself mm, with, yeah. artists growing up, and that's mm. how you honed your skills. Yep. Um, for someone, I mean, and you see this pattern, I mean, some of the greatest modern artists of today, Keith Haring, um, Sebastian, right? Um, they're all street <laughs> artists, graffiti artists, and now they're multimillionaires, right? And so... Yeah. If yeah, cause, artist, cause is another what? example. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what other, Sorry, what other path do you have? What other path do you have if you want to become a great artist other than to do illegal graffiti? Yeah. So I'd say that this doesn't necessarily, it's not only for artists. I think this is for anybody and like, especially for men and I, I for women, this is valuable as well too. But the, the most important thing is like, you need to be surrounded by people who are being put under pressure and you have to be in a field that is, it's like, it's designed for progress and there's co competition involved and you have to want to compete. And so basically the fastest, the, the closest place that you can get to an environment that introduces like all of these elements that I got in graffiti is like a gym or like a fight club, right? Like boxing mm -hmm. or like weight training or any kind of the environment where you're deliberately putting yourself under hardships, where you have to now face all of the self-talk of limitation. Oh, I can't do this. No, you're going to do it. Right. And then you learn about commitment. You learn about like relationships. You learn about like personal development, increasing your, your, your perceptions of self. Right. And this all happened in graffiti, but basically for anyone who's on path, like for example, anyone who comes through my programs, I basically, the base level is you go to the gym, you need to have a physicality. You need to have a state of mind that is developed through intentional hardship where you put yourself through challenges willfully, in order to become better. And then when you do that, it expands into all areas of your life. So I would say it, it has to be in the gym, weight training, fight training, whatever it is, something in that area. Um, Cause that, that would get you the same results. So, so from what I understood is that you have to be hungry for progress. Oh yeah. Yeah. You you're, not, if you're not hungry to progress, bro. You're going to decay and, and you're going to be fucking recycled into the universe, bro. You know, this way you fucking exit it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you also like use the gym for like networking with other graffiti artists? Um, well, I'll be, I'll be transparent. I actually don't spend too much time in the art communities anymore. I actually resent most artists. I think they're a bunch of bitches. Right? <laughs> they're entitled. They're, they're, they're unwilling <laughs> to perform. They think that the world owes them something because they know they have some talents, but they don't do the work to actually be exceptional. They don't have business etiquette. They are emotional typically. And they identify with the starving artist mentality for the most part. So they complain about their finances all day long. So they, I don't actually believe that most of them are accountable. Um, mm -hmm. So I actually, I resent most of the art community and actually art money. The, the brand that I have is the, the synthesis of creative fulfillment and professional success. Most people don't have that. And I want it to be an example that you can have creative fulfillment and be professionally successful. But in order to do that, you have to have a certain character. So I don't fuck with most of them, to be honest. But for networking in the gym, like... I don't say that I would necessarily, I don't necessarily network in the gym. I definitely meet people because it's like, go to places where the people that you want to deal with congregate. Right. Yeah. And so by default, it's a great place. Like, especially like a combat gym, you'll have more of a personal relationship because there's like more of a partner dynamic. So you'll actually meet people directly in, in gyms. Like you're kind of like independent, you're doing your thing, whatever. And most people have their routines. So it's kind of like, it's basically you go to church, go to church and fucking lift heavy shit. And then you meet people you meet. <laughs> them, right? So, yeah, but it's possible. I've met, I've met great people at the Do gym. Do your Sunday prayers on the bench press. Come on. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the church of iron, you know? So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's true. But like, y you can meet people. Mm -hmm. um, and you will meet people is it's, it's by default, the implication of being in the gym is that you're aligned with personal development. So everyone there is intentionally becoming better. So by default, anyone you meet there is like, they're already going to be a higher, higher frequency, a higher level than most of the public. 
So yeah. that's already great. I, I like that about that. Um, but in terms of like networking, you got to go to the hotspots. Like you got to go to places that like that imply the values that you're, you believe in and you align with. Right. So for me, like it was always about like success, like successful environments. So like go to hotel lobbies, like the most baller hotel lobby in your city, just go there and work at the cafe, right. Pay the extra cost on the coffee and just be present. You know what I mean? Go yeah. to events, join communities, join masterminds, you know, where people are congregating. Most of my greatest friends I've met online through private communities and through social media, through posting content and like attracting those people and like publicizing what it is that I value and then putting myself in environments that align with those values. That's like the best way because people, people will often stick to a social circle that's been given them to given to them by default because of proximity. For example, like school, you get born into a family and then you're in an area and then you go to school and then now your social circle is defaulted to you because of the area you were born in, or born into and the school you had been chosen to be at by your family. However, if you want to live an intentional life, you have to really assess the, the social circle you have. And it usually only happens once you graduate high school that you get that choice to be like, who am I and what do I want to do? Like, I don't hang out with pretty much anybody from my high school, none of them, because I had different values and different interests. They went the way that they went and I went the way that I went. But my whole social circle has been redesigned based on intentionality, where I want to go and who I want to surround myself with. And so now my dynamic is like damn near bulletproof because I did it mm -hmm. intentionally. So, so what are the be like three key elements doing? would you say for someone to be able to join your social circle? My social circle? Yeah. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you have to have an intention to be like, like top 1% or more. Like you have to be, you have to, it like success is not an option. It's like, I am going to be the most successful in my field undeniably. If you're not, if you don't think like that, you can't, you won't fit in by default. Um, you have to be like self-reliant. You have to be like accountable to yourself. Like you can't have, you can't have a victim mindset or be blaming the world for your problems. You have to be a hundred percent accountable for everything. Yeah. And, um, what else? So if it's like wanting to be the best in your field, so like desire for performance, like you have to want to be performing, you have to be self-reliant, like no one needs to hold your hand. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with art though, right? You didn't mention like, it's interesting that you're, yeah, team player. Like you can't be, th you can't be threatened by other people's success. So yeah. like, and mm -hmm. I, no. I was kind of hesitant on that because I'm like, where does that come from? But that comes from a relative degree of personal development where you understand that the world is abundant. Someone else's success means your success is more possible, more likely. So it's not mm -hmm. taking away from your success. And then you're also stable in your identity and your perception of self, yeah. because it's usually the people who are unhealed or broken, who, who will like be threatened by their friends winning or like, you know, getting a position that they didn't get or any of this kind of fuckery. So if someone has those resolved and they want to play at the highest level and they're accountable to themselves and they're willing to show up for themselves in the, in like in the community, they'll do well. Like they'll, they'll stick around. And like, ap after that, it's just like personal values. Like, do they just vibe? You know? Yeah. You know, those three, that makes... uh, sorry, I just want to continue I'm on this sorry. point. Um, right. So, um, you know, those three key points you just mentioned about your social circle, they really remind me of how the Navy SEALs usually operate. And mm. the reason I mentioned the Navy SEALs is, um, yeah, Puck, I don't know why Puck is shaking. <laughs> so okay, the reason why I mentioned on. the Navy SEALs is because I feel like for entrepreneurs, they really build a type of system of discipline for themselves so that, mm. and they match that with also like, and this is why you have a lot of them also in the gym and so on. Navy SEALs, I feel like are the best at it. And then there's obviously the military and like different versions of the, of the military and then after that there's um combat sports and then there's mm -hmm. the gym and all of these they teach a sort of like just focus and and physical uh like discipline for yourself so that you can also become more confident and better at making decisions sharper decisions and then the other factor is obviously education just like learning things and mm -hmm. becoming smarter in whatever facet of like field that you're working in combining mm. these two i feel is what basically creates an entrepreneur and those mm. three key elements really like reminded me of that kind of like the system of discipline that 
people want to create for themselves in the as an entrepreneur yep mandatory and actually i'll, I'll add to that, that the entrepreneurial identity is a spiritual ascension the, our, mm -hmm. at our, our, our core the highest level of spiritual expression is entrepreneurship which actually is independently independently governed exchange so you decide your value and you decide how you're going to deliver that or you decide how you're going to deliver value to the marketplace so you're self-actualized someone is not telling you what you're worth and what you need to do you are aligned with your own individuality and then you go out into the marketplace and you serve from that position and then the game is governed by certainty so the person who has the most certainty is the one who wins the game and who's the one who's leading businesses it's the entrepreneur with the most certainty about the direction and so people will follow that individual but it is and it's actually like like kind of like a pyramid entrepreneur and then like base team and then like management and then whatever you know what i mean so it actually is a, a literal uh example of ascension of the mind so when you when you actually commit to personal development the first level for all success is mind and body because yeah. that's your first responsibility if you don't have control over your mind and your body how the fuck are you going to control anything in the game and most people are trying to like do all of this thing outside in the world but they're fat and their fucking emotions are fucked up they can barely even take care of themselves but they're expecting to be rich and have success and have relationships nah like you don't deserve that shit if you don't have your shit under control and so everything at the highest level is earned through personal development because it's not what you do it's who you are that really determines the results that you get and then when you become an example of control and, and self like you know self-management and and you know self-love truly because if you're not taking care of yourself like what does that really say about who you are and so you develop so many benefits out of it and actually this, the first category is personal development so training your mind and your body and then like fueling yourself and then rest and recovery. Like those are the three pillars of personal development as an individual. But what that does is it spills over to relationships because now you can move on to the second category of influence, which is other people. And then how do you do business? It's with other people. So you personally develop yourself, then you become competent in dealing with and engaging and attracting and, and serving other people. And then the third level, you make money. That's business, right? So those three levels, you take care of those in sequence. Most people try to focus on money alone and then they become rich, but they're fat and they don't know how to have relationships. And then you see all these like fucking these like basically they're memes now, these like fat fucking rich people who are trying to buy relationships <laughs> and they're trying to buy their health back because they fucked up the whole game. Or like some like some geek who didn't like develop himself gets a crypto pump and then now he's fucking rich and he's being scammed by chicks who know better. And he's going to be robbed by people who have more <laughs> physicality than them. And he's going to be in fucked up situations because his mindset's not dialed. Right. So if you have like all of those elements and they're fucked up and then even if you have relationships that like, let's say you just happen to be like maybe super attractive, for example, like a super attractive chick who has like a lot of relationship value because all the guys want to be with her, but she's dumb. So she doesn't have personal development. Now she becomes useless in the, in the dating market and she'll just be like kind of used and like whatever she'll be decided for because she doesn't have personal development. She just has a high relationship value, which could create financial value, but she won't even be able to manage and use it wisely because she has no personal development. Right. So you have to start with the first bucket, which is mind and body. You become competent in those areas. And when you wake up in the morning, effectively, just start there. Start your day with the most important bucket of your life, which is you learn, train, fuel, make sure your, your shit is in order and then go out to handling your people. And then when you handle your people, you can make money when you learn like the basic timeless business strategies. Right. Yeah. You are, yeah. I have to agree oh, with this yeah. point because oh, yeah. people in general that are on, on that mindset and maybe have like some good moments in their lives maybe they go viral for like a short a few times or like they have some success in their early years the fact that they're not consistent just ruins the whole thing that's going that's working for them and mm -hmm. because they lack the discipline which comes with the combining of the mind and the body mm -hmm. they just falter and end up you know peaking too early and then mm -hmm. just having a massive collapse for after that peak because they just didn't yep. know how to like control it and make it more consistent yeah and then get and then guess what happens on top of that because their mind is weak they lose it all and they go into a spiral depression and they fucking kill themselves right <laughs> yeah like dude, this is like if the moment that anyone identifies or allows the external world to be their source of validation is the moment they fucked up right we've if you validate yourself by your character, the things that you do every single day, you can't be like, I could lose all of this shit and still make money. 
Cause like my whole brand is like, I fucking go on social media. I got this crazy view. I do all the thing, whatever. Catch people's attention here. Look at now, listen to what I have to say. But because I built myself around who I am as an individual, if I lose all of this shit and I'm still on fucking social media, documenting everything without faltering and still doing the things that I commit to on a base level every single day, I will still make more money because I will be, it will be a better example of not having a fucked up character because I would not fold. I feel like, right. I feel like, the fact that you don't need it's not what you have it's what you have in here yeah what you have in here is worth more than what you have in reality yeah it's not what it's not what you do it's who you are first yes. pillar, personal well, development yeah that cannot be robbed yeah. from you that can never be taken from you because this could all be that's removed. the point it's, it's here yeah. right because that's what you learn and yeah. like you have your own university you have your own school without going to university or going to school you understand mm-hmm. like this is a whole different degree in in life you have a whole different degree mm-hmm. like i not you can never learn this in university you can never learn this in not in the high school you can never do this unless you do it yourself firsthand you have to go on it you have to be on top of it you have to be persistent you have to be on like you have to be everything you want to be to be. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're right, bro. The world doesn't fucking teach people yeah, this yeah, shit. Yeah. That's why you look out in public and people are so fucked, right? You yeah. look out in the world and people are messed up, dude. They're spending their lives. Yeah, I'm poor yeah, yeah. Like, I, I stopped drinking recently, right? I used to smoke a bunch of weed and drink a fuck ton when I was doing graffiti, whatever. I don't do that shit anymore. But just recently, I cut liquor out uh, officially. And now I go out and I'm realizing I don't have anything in common with all of these fucking people because all of them <laughs> yeah, they yeah. spend their entire week doing something they don't love. So by the time the weekend yeah. comes around, the only thing they can look forward to is poisoning their fucking self with alcohol, which is a poison for the body to numb the pain and escape their reality for a brief moment until they have to go back to their slave labor fucking position that they don't want to be doing. It's mind blowing. And when you don't participate, you stop drinking, go to a bar or a lounge on a Saturday and just watch what people are doing. The guys are there trying to fuck the chicks and the girls are there to get attention. The guys go home with fucking nothing. Maybe one or two of them gets laid. And the girls get all the attention from people that they don't even fucking care about. You know what I mean? And so it's a whole fuckery of of a situation. And then here's the kicker. You realize that these people are so lost that you don't want to deal with them anyways. And so you just let them do what they're doing. And then you have to go out in the world and become a light for these people. You become an example of potentiality and you're going to basically disconnect from the majority of the world. But the few people who have a calling in their soul to become more than what that fucking shit show of a mess is will follow you and ask you for advice. And they want your help because that is what your purpose is to heal your fuckery and to become the person that you want to be so that you can take other people along that path to become leaders. And then while you do that, you develop an area of talent or expertise that you are naturally inclined for. For me, it was art. For you guys, it will be something else. And then that becomes your service to the world on top of that service of healing and freeing others from the game. And then that's what we are here to do. That's what I teach people to do full time. That's what I do now full time as my job. It's, it's, it's so strange to see how much pain people are in that they're not even willing to look at. Because someone asked me the other day, they're like, like, won't you miss drinking? And I'm like, I'm like, why would I want to dull my senses from a life that I've created? Why would I want even a moment away from this? I want this in 4K. Like I want to have every single moment in pure conscious awareness and presence. I don't need to escape this. The only reason I would ever want to dull my senses is because I hate my fucking life or I'm avoiding a problem I haven't resolved. And how long would I be willing to accept that? How long would I be willing to live in that life? I'm not willing to do that. And I have, so I have no need to go into this, this fucking fog of mind to dull my senses, to dim this reality. Nah, I don't need that. And the only people who will do that are the people who are not on path. And so it's a very interesting new, uh, <laughs> new world. It's like being behind the curtain. <laughs> wow so, so sebastian what are you living for? no it's how are you handling this it, it, yeah what am i living for this is yeah yeah this i is, want to become the best honestly, i want to become the version of myself that i've always aspired to be mm-hmm. and what is that what? what is that 
the version of yourself. Oh, I want to become the best version of myself because that's, yeah, that's, that's the natural path. We seek personal development. So I want to become the person that I've always aspired to be in every way. And then I want to give my gifts to the world. I want to give my, my talent. I want to give my message. I want to give my creativity to the world at the highest level. I want to create business. I want to help people free their minds. I tell people that I make dreams come true for a living. And for some reason, I've had this message gifted to me very early on. Actually, the day I graduated high school, this is so strange. I walked out the front doors of high school and I looked at all the people. Yeah, I looked at all of the people who were who I went to school with. And the awareness that I had at that moment was these people aren't aware of their potential. All of the conversation, what are you going to do after this? I don't know. I'm probably going to go do this. Or like, what are, are you going to university? Oh, well, my parents want me to do this fucking degree or whatever. So I'm probably going to do that. They're totally leaves in the wind. And I saw this and for some reason, I knew that they had more potential than they were even aware of. And I got this vision in my mind. It was like a freestanding brick wall. It was so strange. Freestand, like it was almost like a cartoon, like a brick wall in like a cloud. You know, you have like the, the cloud dream bubble and it's like, okay, here's the wall. And the middle was broken down and there was light coming through. And I was supposed to be the one who broke through that barrier of the mind and showed people the light on the other side. This is the day I graduated high school. Like I had this vision come to my mind as I looked at my, my peers and I did, I was like, that's interesting. And I walked out and I knew that I was already moving to Montreal to do graffiti. So I walked right by all the people that were like, Oh, what are you doing? It's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I got shit to do. So I left and then I went to graf do graffiti in Montreal for like two years and, and whatever. And it wasn't really until the second year that I really committed to like personal development and business that, that like this really kicked in, but all through my life, there's been this, this pattern of me learning things and becoming aware of something more than people are aware of. And then like giving that to people in the form of like teaching and like mentorship and like giving, like I learned this thing and I kind of developed some mastery in it. And then I'd go and give it to the, to the people that I cared about, the people who had like a spark and who were like kind of attracted to it, like what I was doing and like the world I was in. And I wanted to give them the same key so that they can come with me because I'm going regardless. And I wanted more people to come with me. And so. Sebastian, you know what you had that, that your friends didn't have? No, are you, are you, you have that you're are you gonna No, you had a plan. A plan you had you literally had stages in your life where you had a plan. A lot of people a lot of young people, especially my age, they don't have a plan. Like they graduated university, now what are they gonna do? They're gonna get some shitty job, working nine to five, you know. Like, they don't even care about, they just want to get a house, they want to get this, they're going to be stuck in debt, on top of debt, on top of debt, and literally have someone else control their lives. Mm -hmm. And they have no control of their life. Mm -hmm. And But what you did, which was very beautiful of you, is that you had a plan. When you graduated high school, you got on your feet and you did A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. You didn't care about anybody else's opinion. You did it. You put your head to it, you did it. That's 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 something very nice that I noticed about you. I appreciate it. I was I wasn't sure if you're gonna ask me the question or you're about to tell me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's yeah, it's it's tight, bro. And some people like this is this is a probably the the biggest pain point around this when you see like what I've seen and you see what I see on a daily basis is that some people will never light that fire. Some people are never going to step into the decision that they are creating their future. They're not going to live a life by design. They're going to, they're just comfortable being by default. And it's painful to see it, but there are people who are ready, willing, and able to put in the work that is necessary to be the person that they are here to be. And those few people, because they are rare, make all of the work, all of like the pain of seeing other people fucking just in agony, self-imposed agony that they're not even aware of how to escape. Uh, and some of like the, 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 I guess you could say like loneliness. I'm not gonna say loneliness necessarily because my life isn't really lonely, but you will have fewer relationships of higher quality. And so in between, you know, spending time with those people that you care about, you will be way more fulfilled, but there's going to be fewer of them because there are fewer people who are actually here to, to basically break through and to be that person that they're here to be. And 
it's not easy going through it's not free you might say going through the the journey of sort of like being that person and being the lighthouse for individuals who, who want that but it's more fulfilling than anything that i could ever imagine and there's a message that i share with my guys uh, my students or anyone really that that is interested in this when they're thinking about their life and the the path of their life which is that if you zoomed out on the timeline of your of the entirety of your life and you look down on on it as a complete story and you ask yourself what is the the single most important thing that i would need to see on this timeline to know that i did life right what is that thing and most people are going to say that it's some form of a contribution it's not the money it's not the houses the relationships the cars it's going to be some form of a contribution and until you are aware of what that thing is for you you're going to be lost in the wind on a rat race on the hamster wheel just doing a bunch of fuckery that's not important. And so when you zoom out and look at what that thing is and you understand what that accomplishment or that contribution is for you, you need to delete or remove anything in your life that is conflicting with that and dedicate your entire life to doing only that. Everything else will solve itself because when the why is big enough, the hows will figure themselves out. And that is the only thing that you are here to do. And most people don't know what that is. At least I don't think they've ever asked the question. And so my mission here forward is basically just to share this message with the world and to give them permission to live their life congruently with what they're here to do and to do it in a big way. And uh, my responsibility is just to be an example of what that looks like when you do it. And so that's, that's what I do. Wow. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. like the no. mic drop in the mic. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. Um, <laughs> that was touching Ali. Sebastian, really. I um I felt that totally. I'm you know, I'm speechless to be honest. I'm kinda out of words because um I mean that's what art is, right? It's Ali seems to be lagging, boys. Beautiful. What do you think, Said? Yep. Yeah. Uh what I think I just have one final question for Sebastian. And then mm -hmm. that's about it. Um, Sebastian, have you escaped the matrix? Yes. Well, you've heard it. <laughs> you've heard it here, guys. The man, not the myth, but still the legend. Sebastian has is telling us that he's okay. I'm just I don't. That was a shit outro, bro. I was just, fuck it. No, I, truthfully, <laughs> truthfully, answer your question truthfully. Yes, I have. I yeah, wake yeah. up every single. Day. <laughs> yeah. I wake up every single day doing exactly what I want to, living a life by design, by choice. I choose my actions every single day. I am responsible to do certain things in order to create and sustain and, and continue growing the life that I've created. But yeah. every single day I do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. I make great money helping people make their dreams fucking come true through my artwork and through my coaching. It's just people come with me with questions. They say, I have this vision and I want to realize it. Is it an art form or is it through business and lifestyle? Whichever one it is. I give them the pathway. I give them the pa the the program or the the process to make it real, mm -hmm. and I do that every single day. And my life gets better and better and better. I wake up every single day with a flood of messages in my phone. People thanking me for the information I've shared with them, for the results that they have in their life, to the health that they have achieved. I just got like four or five messages from people right now who just told me that they're quitting drinking, and they're gonna they're committing themselves to a higher path. I have um, people who were like depressed in their job now living aligned and congruent with their higher calling in an area of talent that they have charging more money than they've ever charged in their entire life. This is what escaping the matrix is. And I do it all off of my cell phone, all of it. I can move anywhere. I can be anywhere. As long as I have an internet connection, I will succeed and I will continue to succeed. I'm literally about to dissolve this apartment, broke the lease. I put notice in for end of the month and then come July, I'm driving across the country hitting every major hotspot from Vancouver to Florida with my, with my homie, hitting every major hotspot, speaking at every location, painting as many murals as I possibly can, documenting the entire journey all through my cell phone, all while helping people do more of exactly what it is that I'm doing and teaching them exactly how to do it. Yeah, uh, Sebastian, based on the, the story like, that you, just, you were giving us throughout this past hour, I really admire how you took your experiences and learned from the mistakes that you made and instead of just like consistently falling into more traps in life of like not making any progress, you learned from your mistakes and you're, you've made something out of yourself. 
that is very inspirational mm -hmm. for a lot of people and that's why you get these messages and i'm sure you know mm -hmm. that and thank you for sharing your story with us it's it's been really an amazing an amazing past yeah, hour yeah. and i i love this kind of mindset because this is also something i want to aspire to i hope and hopefully eventually i will reach there as well and you will i apply if, the, and, if... and the same applies to the to the rest of the boys of i'm getting goosebumps now yeah. check this out <laughs> you, will never, you will never have been given the vision if it wasn't possible for you the only thing in the way is your mind fear doubt shame and guilt these are the only mental barriers that are going to prevent you from accomplishing that goal so as long as you take care of your mind you understand how to clear those blocks you remove them from your psychology and you commit yourself to a process where every single day you are in control you are fulfilled by your actions not by the things that are happening outside of you because the world will change it will ebb and flow people will come and go money will be up and down you know what i mean yeah and so you identify with those things outside of yourself you will your self-worth will now fluctuate but if you identify your value with the things that you fulfill, your habits and your routines every single day, and you align those things specifically with that with actions that are proven to get the results that you want, you will have fulfillment because it's about stacking value. And to get like a little esoteric, the way you feel about yourself has an impact on how the world perceives you and deals with you. So energetically, if you're not vibrating high on a frequency internally because of the work that you haven't been doing, because if you, every time that you do something that you know on a psychological level conflicts with the person you want to be, you take a point off of your self-worth and it vibrates out into the world. So anything that you're guilty about, anything that you've done wrong, anything that is like, you know, out of alignment with a higher self costs you your future success. And so every day, what you want to do is you want to make deposits towards that higher self, even if it's a single step, right? Yeah. What is the single highest priority action step I can do today? to take me one step closer to the goals I want to achieve and the person I want to become. And you do that every single day. Everything else is just let it be fuckery because you're going to get to it eventually. But most people prioritize the government and their debts and the fucking rent and like all of these other people above themselves. You have to start with you and your mission. And eventually all of that shit will fall away to the wayside. But you still have to complete the tasks that are responsible for your success. And when you do that, you build that self-worth, you build that self-confidence. And eventually what happens, you become a radiating force that people want to be around become magnetic right yeah and that comes like i would even say like bro what are you doing with your name saying potato peeler bro <laughs> i'm so straight like straight up bro no no i completely like, understand it's just like um I, I, that's, that's a subtle thing i don't yeah. i don't even know you and that's the first impression that i got from you yeah yeah 100 yeah. like, hold, hold yourself in a higher regard because until you do that the world never will and so you have an opportunity to decide first the first level the first principle is self-development to hold yourself at a higher standard so that the world will learn how to perceive you and to deal with you because mm -hmm. you are training the world every single day on how they want to engage with you and how they will deal with you i've been telling the world for a long time that i'm going to be successful that i am successful i now get messages i don't know if you saw that meme uh that shit that went viral like i was like craning the mclaren into the fucking apartment do you see this shit yeah no yeah Maybe again people are sending me that message that this is about, this is about to be you so the world has already decided that I'm going to be an individual that has so much abundant extra cash and wealth that I'm doing frivolous things that people can't even think of. I grew up on welfare, dude. How the fuck is this possible? Because I taught the world how to perceive me. So be very careful about the image and the impression that you leave on other people because you have control over that. What they do with it is up to them, but you have to choose the, the right impression first. So I'll leave you with that. <laughs> I think... Uh... I don't need to do an outro. I'm glad you're not in jail. I'm glad they didn't lock no. you up. They wanted to lock you up, but they didn't, you know? So we're, the world's a better place because of that. Um, yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks, Sebastian, for your time. Art Money CEO. No, I appreciate 